The information revolution is often identified as the most profound driver of change in our world today, enabling an ongoing disruptive transformation in the deep structure to our industrial age social institutions as we move further into the 21st century. Information technology is unleashing the most radical force of our time, hyperconnectivity, which is reshaping all areas of our technology, economy, and social institutions according to a new set of rules, those of access, network structure, information, and knowledge. While the original revolution in technology may be at least partially behind us, the social impact is still largely ahead of us, as in many countries there remains a deep contradiction between the existing institutional structures and those that would be adapted to their underlying technological means. Within such a context, many people believe that we are on the cusp of a fundamental transformation in our political economy, in how we choose to organize society in respect to industry, organizations, and communities. This new form of society that is believed to be emerging is variously called the information or the network society. The concept of a network society is used to describe a certain evolution in the development of social organization. In this respect, societies are social groups that are seen to differ according to subsistence strategies. Societies depend upon their economies and available technology. Although they may not be determined by them, widespread and sustained social transformation can only really happen when new economic and technological means make it possible. The network society concept is based on the idea that social evolution is not determined by technology, but it is enabled by it. Society shapes technology according to the needs, values, and interests of people who use the technology. But at the same time, technology sets the parameters for what is physically possible. Over time, some cultures have moved toward more complex forms of organization and institutional structures. Hunter-gatherer tribes settled around seasonal foodstocks to become agrarian villages. Villages grew to become towns and cities. Cities turned into city-states and nation-states. At each stage in this process of evolution, new, more complex forms of institutions were formed to structure society. This evolution of social complexity has been a process of developing social institutions that are ever more populous, having to integrate more people, with the members having more differentiated and specialized functional roles. The capacity of societies to develop toward greater complexity is not only dependent upon their means of subsistence, but also directly related to their means of communication. Communication is the essence of social organization in that all organizations involve the coordination between members, and coordination can only be realized through communications of some form. Social institutions, being the interaction between people, will only ever scale to the level and complexity that interaction scales to through communications. Throughout history, the means through which we have connected, the available means of communications has been directly correlated to our capacity to form complex social systems. In the ever ongoing evolution of larger, more complex social systems, Societies have developed ever more sophisticated ways to decouple the information that is being exchanged from the constraining physical means that supports it, in order to enable more efficient communications and more complex systems of organization to emerge. Since prehistory, significant changes in communication technologies have evolved in tandem with shifts in political and economic systems of organization, as they have come to form new specific combined overall structures or paradigms of socio-economic organization. The first era of communications, that of the oral tradition, stretches from the time humankind first acquired speech, some 500,000 years ago, to the beginnings of literacy 5,000 years ago. The origins of the spoken language would have been the first revolution in human connectivity, 
within small groups through communications. The second era, the Age of Literacy, includes the period from the invention of writing to the discovery of electrical communications, which parallels the development of advanced civilization in Egypt and the Fertile Crescent. The arrival of the printing press and movable type at the beginning of the modern era marked a major innovation in communications that had widespread social effects and may be seen as the origins of modern mass communications. The third communication era, that of the electrical flow of information and mass communications, starts with the first use of the telegraph and telephone as mediums for instant communications over large distances at unprecedented speed. These new communications technologies went hand in hand with the new socioeconomic systems of organization that developed during the industrial age. With these communications technologies, we had mediums where either we could create large groups, but with only one-way communication, such as broadcast media, or we could create two-way communication, but not in large groups, such as the telephone. It was the information revolution of the latter half of the 20th century that was to change this paradigm. format, microprocessor, and global telecommunication network of the Internet has come a new communications revolution. What is different about today's communication medium is the capacity for information exchange, from many to many, over long distances at very low cost. And it is precisely this capacity that forms the foundations to a new form of networked organization. The network society in this respect can be understood as this stage in the evolution of our communications medium and the new forms of more complex social institutions that are enabled by this nonlinear, pervasive exchange of information. Connectivity, per se, is of course nothing new. For hundreds of years, people have been drawn to spaces where connections can be made. The forum, the cafe, the marketplace. However, the power of digital connectivity makes social interaction all-pervasive, anytime, any place, anywhere, and to anyone. Access to connectivity is not hierarchical in the traditional sense, but flows horizontally and is linked to access to technology. This move into a pervasive communications paradigm is sometimes called hyperconnectivity. Hyperconnectivity is marked by the shift from a linear to a nonlinear communication paradigm. Instead of information flowing in a well defined direction between a limited number of points at particular times and places, in a network society, communications exchange becomes pervasive. It comes to flow in multiple directions between all points continuously. This pervasive exchange of information comes to create a new form of organizational structure, what we call a network, with organizations and individuals then becoming based around and defined by connectivity and access to these networks. As the volume of exchange along channels and the number of channels of exchange a node has have increased, it becomes increasingly defined by that exchange, as opposed to any of its inherent features or boundary. This is probably the most fundamental thing we can say about the concept of the network society, that it represents a move from social systems defined by their components to ones defined by connections. As connectivity increases, the emphasis shifts from ownership by closed organizations within a context defined by physical constraints to access through open organizations within a context defined by one's location within a network of connections. Such a fundamental change in the deep structure to social organization then feeds through to major disruption and transformation within existing social institutions. Thank you.
networks throughout history had a major advantage and a major problem vis-à-vis -vis other forms of social organization. On the one hand, they are the most adaptable and flexible organizational forms, working well in many situations of informal organization. On the other hand, in the past, they could not master and coordinate the resources needed to accomplish large tasks. Thus, historically, networks have been the domain of the private world and informal organization, while the world of production, power, and war was occupied by large vertical organizations, such as states, churches, armies, and corporations, that could marshal vast pools of resources around the purpose defined by a central authority. However, today digital networking technologies now enable networks to overcome these historical limits. They can, at the same time, be flexible and adaptive, thanks to their capacity to decentralize performance along a network of autonomous components. While at the same time, through automated algorithms running on platforms, they are now able to coordinate all this decentralized activity toward a shared purpose. Previously, hierarchical systems were limited in their capacity to process the information required for such distributed coordination. But with automated platforms, this very complex dynamic coordination is now possible. This combination of nonlinear communications and automated platforms makes networked organizations potentially capable of very complex functions that involve both highly differentiated autonomous parts and dynamic coordination between them. Connectivity both destroys and creates. It brings down borders, walls, and boundaries, and the structures that they support. But as it does so, it also creates the grounds for new structures to emerge. In a networked world, traditional institutional structures that are predicated on the flow of information in a linear fashion and a monopoly over the means of production and organization are rendered less and less effective with every new horizontal connection that is made with every new smartphone sold, and with every new software platform for social coordination that comes online. This flow of information along networks comes to restructure human institutions and human experience, away from a linear sequential model to a nonlinear asynchronous model. It disaggregates the component parts within existing linear processes and organizations with fixed boundaries and recombines them in new ways through networks. As the network society diffuses and new communication technologies expand their networks, there is an explosion of horizontal networks of communication and the collapse of context leads to decontextualization, social, cultural, political, and economic. Previous processes that were integrated become decomposed as communications technology allows us to disaggregate them. For example, with globalization, we have seen the unbundling of production processes that were previously local or national and their distribution out into global supply networks. At the same time, things that were previously separate converge and become combined. Lack of spatial, social, and temporal boundaries makes it difficult to maintain distinct social and cultural contexts. Traditional contexts that were defined by location and boundaries get collapsed and collide in unexpected ways that may have positive or negative outcomes. Networks unbundle elements from their previous configuration that was defined by the constraints of space, time, and information limitations, and then make them available within new patterns of organization based on the structure of networks. Social systems come to be both individualized and highly modular but also morph into ever larger global networks. The scale of the network society is both extended and reduced as compared to the mass society, as it is both global and local. The organization of its component individuals and groups is no longer tied to particular times and places, as processes increasingly happen in a non-linear, asynchronous fashion. society is also an information society. 
while advances in telecommunication creates networked organizations. The rise of computation and the move from an industrial economy to an information economy makes information and ideas the primary source of value added in the economy and the key differentiator. Socioeconomic organization becomes based around networks where individuals and organizations process information and knowledge. As such, we can say that the networked organization is an evolution of our social structures that is designed to optimize the processing of information and ideas within society and economy, as opposed to social structures based upon the processing of physical resources. In the same way that the bureaucratic, hierarchical, and well-bounded organization of the industrial age was optimized for the technologies and economic processes that were taking place within that society. The network as a socioeconomic structure that is aligned with the underlying physical flow of information is one that is optimized for the processing of information and ideas that take place within post-industrial economies as a primary activity of value generation. The new structures that emerge in an information society are based on the processing of information and knowledge, and out of this a new organization principle emerges that is no longer based around space and the processing of physical resources, but one that is based upon the relationship between information and knowledge processing, what is called the information hierarchy. The information pyramid defines a purported functional relationship between information and knowledge where lower levels comprise the material or building blocks for the higher levels. Data is the oil of the information economy, and value is in processing it into higher levels of organization, information, knowledge, and actionable insight. The value of one's role in these networks is in how one processes information and ideas. While information technology reduces physical limitations and the structures built around them, New ones form based around the inherent constraints in processing information and increasingly knowledge. As information technology becomes connected up to a high-tech economic base, mass automation commoditizes physical activity and means that ideas can be realized and materialized at an ever faster pace. Innovation moves to the forefront of economic activity and the constraining factor becomes the creation of new innovations and ideas. Just as access to the physical resources of production form the divides within an industrial capitalist economy, so too divides form within an information network society. Divides based upon one's value to the network and one's capacity to process information and knowledge. Despite the disintegration of traditional divides around the physical means of production between capitalists and the proletariat, differentiation remains based upon access and processing capabilities. However, the resources have now changed. While networks break down traditional physical borders around closed organizations, they create a new logic of inclusion and exclusion based on functionality instead of physicality, people's functionality within information processing networks. In research by the sociologist Manuel Castells, he analyzes the new hierarchy and divides. He sees labor as fundamentally divided into two types, networked labor, which serves the goals of the network, and switched off labor, which has nothing to offer the network and in the context of the network economy is non-labor. 
power in a network society becomes based on inclusion or exclusion from access to networks. Hence, resistance to the rise of networks comes from communities oriented around physical space and production. Those dislocated or excluded by the network society, such as the no longer needed industrial labor, naturally gravitate to identities of communal resistance, creating a divide between local and global, between networks and traditional institutions such as the nation-state. While the divides created by the industrial age become eroded, new divides form and become accentuated through fast-paced transformation. As we transit into a new form of global services and information economy, the traditional organizational model that provided the mass of people within advanced economies with structure and support during the industrial age are disintegrating. Whether we are talking about stable jobs, a sense of potential progress for the middle class, or sense of national community and identity. A strong bifurcation forms between those who are able to avail of the new opportunities offered by these networks and those who can't. The transition is expressed in a loss of legitimacy in traditional institutions of the industrial age, such as the state and civil society, that can no longer deliver what is required, with a resulting combination of people retreating into the personal sphere and the expansion into networks. In the absence of the desired order, vision and leadership from the mainstream, new and old political organizations will inevitably use this to their advantage, presenting simple solutions to complex challenges by retreating to traditionally protected spaces with strong borders and identity, while at the same time new IT-enabled networks scale rapidly to create global organizations. This transition, as it unfolds at such a rapid pace, leaves individuals and societies deeply divided in their response. The evolution of our socioeconomic systems of organization into a networked society is an ongoing process of creative destruction a massive transformation that is happening at an extraordinary pace and will affect all areas of social and economic organization. profound driver of change in our world today, enabling an ongoing disruptive transformation in the deep structure to our industrial age social institutions as we move further into the 21st century. Information technology is unleashing the most radical force of our time, hyperconnectivity, which is reshaping all areas of our technology, economy, and social institutions according to a new set of rules, those of access, network structure, information. Within such a context, many people believe that we are on the cusp of a fundamental transformation in our political economy, in how we choose to organize society in respect to industry, organizations, and communities. This new form of society that is believed to be emerging is variously called the information or the network society. and knowledge. While the original revolution in technology may be at least partially behind us, the social impact is still largely ahead of us, as in many countries there remains a deep contradiction between the existing institutional structures 
and those that would be adapted to their underlying technological means. The information revolution is often identified as the most The concept of a network society is used to describe a certain evolution in the development of social organization. In this respect, societies are social groups that are seen to differ according to subsistence strategies. Societies depend upon their economies and available technology. Although they may not be determined by them, widespread and sustained social transformation